The Thunder lost in the second round, but who cares? They jumped from the play-in to the number one seed, runner-up MVP and rookie of the year and coach of the year. What could go wrong? Well, they have been here before and messed it up. No wonder GM Sam Presti says, we want this thing to continue, to not skip steps. We've managed our salaries to give us a lot of flexibility down the road, which is true, but that's from 2010, right before it all blew up. So no matter what they do or how smart they are, one thing could take it all down again. But I have to take an L for doubting the Thunder. Before the season, I predicted they would be a play-in team again, but people like Bill Simmons were right. He said this was the year they would take a jump, and they got the third most wins in franchise history. Then they go into the playoffs, sweep the Pelicans in round one. Yes, they blew a 17-point lead game six to the Mavericks, but Shea Gilgis Alexander proved one thing. His game translates to the playoffs. There's a few things you usually need to win a chip, a top 10 defense and a top five player. And OKC number four defense, the ringer says top five players right now, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, Giannis, SGA and Joel Embiid. Hard to argue with that. SGA will become the first NBA player to earn a million dollars per game on his next contract. Do got first team all NBA. That's 81 plus million much deserved. So outside of health, what could possibly go wrong? Well, one thing that could have helped this year is interior help for defense and rebounding. But Presti refused to make that big trade at the deadline, so the Mavericks got Daniel Gafford instead, which would have been amazing for them. But Presti doesn't want to skip steps. He wanted to throw all of his young guys out there to see what they got, which told us Josh Giddy ain't it. Look, he is a good player, but he doesn't fit with this team. Josh was so bad on defense, Dallas shot 60% with him as the primary defender. That is awful. On offense, he struggles shooting, and the Mavs could sag off him and pack the paint. So finally, Coach Mark Dagnall benched Giddy in game five. And it made sense. If SGA is handling the ball, what does Giddy do? He's better off on a different team running his own show. But outside of that, their potential big three is SGA, Chet Holmgren, and Jalen Williams. All 25 years old and younger. Weirdly similar to 2012, when they were in an even better position than now. Game one of the finals, they beat Miami's big three. Then game two, they barely lost 101 to 96 this close to going up 2-0 in the finals. But the Heat won the final three games in Miami and everyone said, oh, they'll be back. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, 23 years old. James Harden and Serge Ibaka were 22. It's a sure thing. But here's how it played out. In 2013, they traded Harden and Russ got hurt. 2014, the champion Spurs dominated the conference finals. 2015, they missed the playoffs because KD broke his foot. 2016, back to the conference finals, but blew a 3-1 lead to the 73-win Warriors with Game 6 Clay. By 2017, it was all over. Kevin Durant left in free agency. Oh, it was a guarantee they'd be back to the finals, but 12 years later, they haven't been back since. That's how quickly things can go south and why there are no guarantees. A big problem then was choosing to pay Ibaka over Harden, but they won't make that same mistake. This Thunder team has a different problem. Right now, they are set up to trade for another star. The common philosophy is you build to a point where a big trade can put you over the top. And OKC has more draft picks than anyone to deal, so whatever star comes available is theirs. The Cavs did this. They pounced when Donovan Mitchell came on the market. But OKC is operating differently. I mean, they already have a top five player and can build out around the edges. What would another star do? They have a stretch five in Chet, a two-way wing in J-Dub, nasty defender in Lou Dort, and good role players like Isaiah Joe, Kaysan Wallace, and Aaron Wiggins. One thing we saw in the Mavs series, though, was a secondary playmaker can take the pressure off SGA. Dallas keyed on Shea, and Josh Giddy was no help. That was actually the point of the Gordon Hayward trade, but that failed. They also need more paint defense and rebounding with Chet, but here's where it gets tricky. OKC has a small window to get that star 
and keep the whole team intact. Like the Cavaliers got Donovan Mitchell, they had to give up Laurie Markin and Colin Sexton and picks. No, this is like when the Warriors kept their guys together and added Kevin Durant. Look, I know you don't want to skip steps, but this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. No other team can do this, but why? Well, it's because they are so ahead of schedule that two of their top three players are still on rookie contracts. Chet Holmgren makes $10.8 million a year. J-Dub just $4.7 million. Compare that to the top three of other contenders, like the Celtics are paying Tatum and Brown 35 and 50 million. Porzingis is at 29. Drew Holiday gets 30. The Nuggets have Jokic at 51, Jamal Murray and MPJ at 35. So the Thunder can afford to bring in someone with cap space and not trade a single dude. And they've got this window for two more years. That is how long Chet and J-Dub will be on the rookie deals before they get big contracts. So what's the problem? Well, they don't want to mess up this chemistry. I mean, what if they get like a Trey Young that messes with the entire dynamic of their offense? What about the Brooklyn Nets mistake getting Ben Simmons? Thunder can't afford to mess this up. So they can use the cap space instead to re-sign their own guys early like Isaiah Joe and Aaron Wiggins but pass up this opportunity? If OKC makes this trade, they've got 13 first and 22 second round picks to deal the next seven years. So who could they get? Well, the Thunder get DeJounte Murray, the Hawks get Dorian Finney-Smith and two first round picks, the Nets get Giddy and two first. DeJounte is a much better fit over Giddy because he can play make and score at will. A defense can't double team SGA in the backcourt with Murray to deal with. The Nets want two picks for DFS, who is a perfect defensive fit in Atlanta, who also get two potential lottery picks. This is also a good fit salary-wise because DeJounte only makes 25 mil a year. Or what about the Thunder getting Jarrett Allen? The Cavs get Josh Giddy, Kenrich Williams, Jalen Williams, and two first. OKC's big weakness was rebounding, and Allen grabbed 11 boards a night with 17 points. Chet Holmgren is an amazing stretch five for spacing, but his youth and inexperience would benefit from an all-star Jarrett Allen. On the Cavs, Kenrich Williams is a two-way forward, and Jay Will is the perfect backup big they need for Evan Mobley. Now, the Thunder do get the best player in this trade, so maybe it takes more picks, but look, obviously you'd love to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. Like, they've got a lot going for them, perfect position, but they could mess it up in two different ways. They could make the trade, but get the wrong guy who screws everything up, or they could pass on the trade and miss a golden opportunity at all-star talent. Either way, OKC has done great so far, but they are not some done deal dynasty. Now, there is a similar problem going on in New York. The Knicks are all set up to trade for a star. It's built all the way to this, right when things are looking great. It might not happen after all, which is why their new plan is insane.